Hello folks and welcome to the game where every tabletop is a stage and we are merely players. We, we are, are indeed. indeed. I thought I was going to be on my own, but they supported me at the end. Uh, <laughs> I didn't, I just you. laughed. It's me. I didn't. We stand by Supportive you. laughs. It's me, Max, here, uh, which means, as your DM, we are back in the world of Soretta. Um, and so we're just going to, you know... There's a lot riding on this, so who knows what's going to happen. Uh, I can only plan so much, but Ollie is in my eye line, so Hello. we'll see where we go. But to Here introduce the rest of our merry band of folk, to my left we have... Austin Hayes playing Revriel. Ollie Towers playing Alloin Oakfoot. <laughs> Emily Sortel playing Ethely Frozen Shade. And Jacob Caesar playing Dwight. Wonderful, our lovely band of folks. So, a lot happened last session, so I'm going to do the quickest of quick recaps if I can, see what I can remember, and then we'll jump straight back in to see what choices are made and where we go, and how much I have planned for. <laughs> so, we left off last time with Doit initially having his own little micro-adventure in this Whoa. office as a lizard, uh, exploring through, skittering across the wall. Oh, he was skittering. Skittering all over the place. Uh, skittering across skittering. the wall, climbing down and noticing something shiny in a desk drawer. Meanwhile, the, car, the party continued to parlay with Strong, with a new figure descending the staircase to join in this fun little inquisition, immediately taking charge of the situation, establishing themselves as the person the party are looking for, Stilgar shouts with a very change accent so we'll see what she sounds like today uh, shouts wasting no time questioning the party she slowly turned like a little antagonizing as she let slip to Ethelief that she thought that Ethelief may be here because Stilgar has information on the whereabouts of Ethelief's children Whilst talking, Revriel noticed something off about the physical form of Shouts, who was standing in front of them hearing a little whispered voice that was seemingly repeating or initiating what was coming out of this form in front of them's mouth. Uh, going across, faking needing the toilet. They got very intrigued about a certain booth in the corner, which was just past the spiral staircases that they saw shouts descend from. There are a lot of S's here, so I'm going to be tripping up. They then returned to be overwhelmed by information that was then given by shouts who noticed their little exploration and their stealth check and their disguised self didn't really fly with her so she decided to have a little bit of fun and drop a lot of lore and a lot of information which has been baffling Reveriel's little brain namely the idea of uh Karak Shaw tired of kind of pussyfooting around uh shouts lay two daggers down on the table telling them that she will get Ethelief to her children if they take out Took for her not just offering this aid, but threatening violence to them if uh, the yeah, party right? do not help her. She's yeah, a lovely man. person. Threatening my kids. She's scared. Pocketing the daggers, uh, our little band of folk took a quick sidebar to discuss their motives. Lizard Doit returning and offering his spoils to the party. Uh -huh. Everyone recognised, apart from Alowin, that these were little sigils of the Pointer's Breeze. I yet know bringing what that was. Yeah. another little thread into our investigation. As they were chatting, they were kind of talking about what Took wanted them to do, realising that Shouts now knows that they've helped Took and that he is still alive, and that maybe they should kill her. And just as that thought flew through Revriel's brain, he felt a little bit of pressure as Shouts' consciousness was noticed to have entered their mind, not reading all she wanted, but reading the thing that threatened her most. She decided to I am shout after them. Having a little go, they all came into combat in this here smugglers guild Huzzah. seeing that strong building himself into some sort of rage uh stilgar disappeared everyone kind of had a little investigation revriel sent a message to took calling for aid alloin throwing a boomerang at these massive uh, metal concave uh, information transport systems and Doit summoning two bears from the ground. As soon as he strode upon these bears, a gash appeared out of nowhere across his chest as he took the most damage that That's I think both here. Jacob and Doit have taken. Doit, Seeing her Doit's party in disarray and getting fucked up, Ethelief called out to Strong, calming him down out of his rage, then turning her attention to shouts. They had words about the Pointer's Breeze being the main enemies, and Stilgar is in the process of being convinced to lend aid. However, we pick up our little story, still in initiative. Cue the music, with oh, wow. Alwyn to act next. 
What are we doing, sir? Um, You've seen but... your party, one of whom's been had a big chunk taken out, the others whispered to themselves, and Ethelief has called out to these two people who were addressing her primarily. I sound significantly less cool when you say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> what are we up to? Your boomerang is still out because you haven't used your bonus action to return it. Was I in initiative when I threw it? Yeah. No. That was one of your attack actions. You threw it to hit the... Great. So, um... Great, I'm going to use my movement to get on top of the bear. Okay. Cool. Which is 15 feet of movement. Easy enough. You can kind of... You wouldn't have to sidestep her because you were yeah. by Doit when it happened, yeah? Um, and then I'm going to bonus action recall my uh, boomerang. Cool. And it can uh, obviously hit someone on the way back, make an attack on the way back. It can. Do you wish to do that? Yeah. Against whom? Definitely. <laughs> um, I'm going to do it against one more time. that woman. Against shouts. Yeah, because she's. We all know that she slashed Doit, right? You That's all saw. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. So Doit took damage, and then she appeared. She looks. Uh, make me an insight check. Because I also have a. Uh, I'm thinking. not taking this role. I'm not taking this action away from you. I just want you to know what's happening as you do it. Eighteen. Yeah. Eighteen. Perfect. This woman um, around people. You kind of saw her. She felt very comfortable. You are in her space. This is a place she has domain over, right? She looked comfortable. Two bears just erupted out of the floor. She is locked in eye contact with Ethelief, and you kind of see in that she is grabbing onto any semblance of her own understanding of someone who thinks maybe in a way that she does and can offer her aid. She is scared. And the name of the Pointer's Breeze struck something even deeper. Maybe alleviating a bit of the fear or adding more on top of it. You can't, even with an 18, you can't quite tell. They kind of act in motives you can't yet understand. Or they have an impact over her that you can't yet understand. Make an attack roll. She's fucking scared. <laughs> of me. Make an attack roll for the boomerang. Is it with disadvantage or is it just a straight roll? What does it say? Uh, bonus action return boomerang. Make an attack on target in front cool. of you as it Sweet. returns. Do I have a second attack as well? Uh, 18. 18? Plus 2, 20. Yeah. 20. 20 hits. Roll damage. You also do have two attacks. 7 on the first one. 7 point of damage. Yeah. Ethelief, as she, as you say your final words, then tell us. You just hear... <laughs> and she goes... Yeah! As she kind of... You see this boomerang slip past, take on her shoulder. The serrate just kind of... <laughs> bits of blood kind of... <laughs> splatter off it as Alloin... <laughs> you catch it over Ethelief's shoulder. Nice. Second um, attack, if you wish to take it. How far away is she from me? She is probably about 30 feet, I'd say. Okay. Um, I would like to Probably move. like a full move. Yeah, so I'm going to go while well, I'm on top of the bear. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you're on top of the bear. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> so you use some of your movement to get on top of the bear. So it's, 50, it's half my, so it's 15. Yeah. Um, so 15 to get up, and I'm going to move 15 uh, towards her. Okay. And try and get these guys behind me. Okay, cool. <laughs> Pull my... Uh, uh, on long the bear? On top of the bear. Make an animal handling check. It's friendly. With advantage, because it's friendly, because it's one of Doit's uh, summons. Uh, six on animal handling. Six. This bear, as you kind of try and go, yeah, to get this bear going, <laughs> you see it is completely aware that Doit has been harmed, so it does not want to move away from Doit. Okay. Um... It doesn't move. Okay, well then let's burn my movement. I'm going to pull out my bow, mm -hmm. and and I'm going to make a I'm going to make a second attack. Okay, but I'm going to attack uh, towards her. But I'm going to fire it at the floor. I want to try and get right between her legs. Okay, to intimidate. She's standing right. to intimidate. Make two <laughs> rolls. First is an attack roll. Uh huh. Oh god, that is a uh, two, two, uh, two. Mark, 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 mark. Uh, make me an intimidation check with disadvantage. Either way, the arrow would have struck around where you want to, but this is whether it looks like you were in attend uh, intending to or just fucked up. So there's an intimidation 12. Okay. And I can... I see that she's scared. Mm -hmm. And I say, as soon as I've mentioned the point of breeze, we all saw the fear in your eyes. And I suggest you cough up some information, you work with us, or it's going to get a lot worse. Cool. Fire the arrow out of the ground. Cool. 
on top of a bear with a bow. <laughs> yeah, really that doesn't bad. move, but you know, I, she I is. Not. You see, she's like still like she's putting pressure on her shoulder. Um, some of the first damage she's like properly taken, and she just kind of her her gaze looks towards you. And with all of your passive insights, especially yours, Rev, you see she has gone from will definitely talk to okay, I don't trust any of these people anymore. But she is kind of like a coiled cobra. You you get Rev with your thing. You got one more chance, or she'll be like attack. And she looks at you. Alamir is like, I don't think that is the correct way to get information from people. You have just put us through the fucking ringer. We came down here looking for you. You you disappear out of nowhere. Big lad over here can't hold his drink, and he's been mouthing off. Next thing you know, he gets a cut through his stomach. So I suggest oh, we're on the same page here. Cool. Next nice initiative order, Revriel. So Rev has seen their friend Doit be gashed and take oh so much damage and in their hand you would see sparks of magic brewing ready ready to cast a third level inflict wounds which would deal 5d10 necrotic damage do it but i will instead <laughs> cast zone of truth okay and make my way over okay, in that you. area so everyone it was going to be calm emotions or zone of truth and zone of Sweet. truth is the higher so Sweet. i want to make sure this is very cool Oh, I wanted that inflict wounds so What is the bad. save, do you know? Huh? What's the save? Is it a wish you can negotiate? It's a charisma. All right. a charisma. So, Interesting. Um, I create a magical zone in a 15-foot radius sphere centered on a point of your choice within range. Until the spell ends, a creature that enters the spell's aura for the first time on that turn, or starts its turn there, must make a charisma saving throw. Okay. On a failed save, the creature cannot speak a deliberate lie. Mm-hmm. Whew. Cool. An affected creature is aware of the spell and can thus avoid answering questions. What was the range again? Fifteen feet around me, so I get fifteen so feet. feet. Fifteen feet. Oh, around you, so oh, you have to get up. Centered on the point of my choice, so I will okay. center it at her. You will be able to get both her and strong in this. Great. I won't. You will. I will. Great. We're stuck together, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. So strong was starting to move forward to get in front of her to kind of act mm. as a buffer. Great. Uh, she started to move further back towards him, so you can get them both if you want. Great. I would like to very much cool. so. So it's two charisma saves. Charisma save. Cool. Cool. Do either of them beat a 16? Do you know if they've been affected? Know, uh, uh, see, Max is now... Ma- Max is being the mean one now. I just want to make I'm it clear. I'm not being I, mean. I just... One of them rolled a natural 20. We'll make you pay. <laughs> <laughs> you know You know whether each creature succeeds or fails. So Shouts rolled a natural 20 and Strong rolled a... Uh, it's actually a natural zero. We've <laughs> got minus one, so... Why not a natural zero yet. We've got minus two. He rolled a two. Great. So, uh, she, you see this kind of. How? What does it look like when you cast this? So I zone think. Of truth? I think it's very. Um, I think a lot of their magic has tended to come from the eyes, and since this is about sort of like what their words say, I think that just a little beam of starlight erupts from the back of their throat, and they open, and it just, it, like pours out through their mouth, Damn. lighting right in front of them, and then just catching them. That's cool. And lighting up their eyes. If they're affected, or to, in my mm. sight, if they're affected or not. Perfect. You all see this kind of this initial arcane energy from Rev's hand just dissipates, kind of catapults up through their body and erupts out of their face as they are, as both Strong and Stilgar are hit with this light. Stilgar kind of holding steady, just wincing either through her injury or through this light which is now affecting her, shrugging something off. Mm-hmm. Um, not hostile through it. Right, right. She kind of is now aware, with all of your passive insights, aware that action against her, like physical attacks against her is, is not going to happen mm. for the foreseeable. She is going to be questioned. This is, you, you get the understanding she's had Zone of Truth cast on her before. Right, yeah. Um, so even if she did fail, she might be able to weasel her way through. Right. Strong, on the other hand, as you see his muscles relax as he kind of moves out of this rage, he slumps a little bit and he actually falls unconscious, exhausted but starts muttering 
as he sleeps. Uh. Sleep talking the house and go away through the place. It's the most uh, accurate uh, anyone uh, can be in their dreams. This is the place. This is how you get good, very good. <laughs> Sleep well, my you boy. You're feeling like you will be able to talk to the true subconscious of strong. As mm. dreams are simply manifestations of what we hold behind our eyes. That's true. It's what they are. Very good. Um, Thank you. And I just, I do that, and it's lots of pretty lights, and then go, if you have any questions, ask strong. This is all, like, Mabriel's <laughs> mouth's open, it's like, hey, 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 as they push this yeah. beam onto other people. Uh, and that's sort of what I can, that's sort of what I can do. You, if you want, we can jump out of initiative, because it is strong's go next. Uh, yeah. Can we just, and yeah. he is unconscious, yes, as he just. Has he, has he fallen down? He's like kind of slumped onto his knees. You've seen uh, berserkers and, and barbarians who, when they come out of this rage, Strong had something else in him. They don't usually get exhausted per se, mm. but he is just... And he needs this rest and this relaxation of his anger, which has come as he's slumped on his knees, head down, kind of swaying a little bit in Reverie's light. I go up and drop to my knees too but like hold his like collar still gotta let you pass and just uh, where are my children it's kind of information that we are not uh, where are my children I honestly have no idea does she know uh, yes asking the wrong person <laughs> you are you are asking the wrong person uh, where I are my said, children I will give you that information freely but what I will do first is I will offer this to you as fact, okay? You shine your light on me. I can happily speak the truth here. Your children are of importance to me. Not because, you know, because they are children, you know. Using children as bargaining tools uh, was not initially my idea. But... If you are to take down these people that you have had innings with, we need Took. And you need the power of Boronor, you need me. I will get you to your children, but hopefully in the sake of goodwill, and she looks to Doit, and I apologize, I guess. Inside check. Yep, write me inside check. <laughs> yeah. Five. She's genuine. <laughs> I hop down the bear. I hop down and off the bear, and I lift my shirt and let the bear lick my boobs. Ooh, and I'm like, <laughs> okay. I will give you information to get to your children, but you need more information on them first, no? Once you a otherwise you'd be putting your children in danger if you do not first know the enemy that you are coming up against. Of course, your children are safe. I promise you that. I put them in a little pot uh, in a little. Um, not another port town. <laughs> in a town I use as an intermediary to move certain wares across the main body in, of Sareta. I promise you. And they're being looked after? They are being looked after. Okay. They go to school. I don't think they necessarily skip school. Uh, they have a nice little foster family who took them in. Under my watch, of course, I get updates. And they're happy? I can't talk for people's emotional states, especially that of children, you know? Especially the world is so fucked as it is. <laughs> Can I, as this is happening, just go over to Strong? Yep. And sit behind his head? Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm going to put my hands on the side of his head. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Carrick Shaw. And we're going to press in a little bit. Woo! Okay. Make me an intimidation check as well. This will push through any chance of him withholding stuff. It's not great. It's, okay. Um, well, he rolled a two, so he's going to be quite forthcoming anyway. Uh, it's an eight. An eight? You kind of push in and you, you feel the energy surge into your hands and you do not just hearing his kind of ramblings of a tired man but you see little flashes of imagery and you see he he, he, he talks of Shaw as an individual of great importance or he thinks of Shaw as an individual of great importance someone yeah. he is not to talk to 
This is above his kind of pay grade. Um, and you see an image of three individuals. You see... Notes! 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 <laughs> notes! The back of... Well, you see shouts, for one. And kind of pushing your own consciousness in here, your own understanding of what Shaw looks like, you see that man. You see that kind of uh, anemic elf yeah. figure that you met at the mayor's house. Right. And you see another figure next to them who is within gold armor, human male, kind of hard to, with the eight, it's kind of hard to kind of pick that out, uh, red hair, and with your insight, even with an ape, the eight, there is one thing that is the main symbol of this person, and you notice it is the same sigil that you saw Gerard and Petunia pull out as their badges. Ha ha. Char is... One of the three uh, that are the ones that talk to the higher uh, kind of person, I guess. As these memories are kind of going by me in my subconscious or in my connection, I want to try to grab onto them mm -hmm. and do the thing where I can see if I can speak to him not out loud but through his dreaming state. Okay, we're going to do a contested little, just a yep. wisdom check and I'll give you proficiency on it. What is it? Proficiency? What is it? Uh... That's a 9, plus 5 is a 14. That's a 9, minus 1, which is an 8. <gasps> so you win. Yes. Do you wish to, you wish to enter his yeah. subconscious? Yeah. As you kind of enter, you see Strong is there, like this weird kind of, you're standing in almost like a, you just feel grass kind of on your legs as you're standing in this, in this field. That's not really a field as trees begin to kind of grow around you. And your body meets Strong's figure as he kind of just stands there, this uh, Goliath man. Um, both of his hands. He seems to, within mm. his subconscious, he has his entire kind of mm. corporeal form is, is what he sees himself as. And he stands there. And, um, yeah, what do you want to do? He's fully awake within his own mind. Hi. Hello. How did you uh, get here? Uh, this is, this wow, is... you kind of... I've not been here in a long time. Where is here? Here is home, uh, I guess. Well, look, so, and he kind of... He's very sedate. Yeah. Kind of like a little big teddy bear. Yeah. This is, this is a, 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 a man... A little big teddy bear. You've only seen as an attack dog or right. a guard. Right. This is a man who is so comfortable. Uh within his own self. He seems to just enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, He kind of moves up to you, and he shows you on his arm. You uh, notice the start of this anyway, but you were distracted by the mage hand and the combat. Yeah. Starting on his hand, which has been chopped off in this real reality um, of the outside of his mind and dreams, yeah. is a tattoo of branches and leaves and a tree which kind of wraps up his arm and onto his chest. That's really pretty. Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. Where did it you holds. get it? This? Yeah. Everyone from my clan, everyone from this homeland has this kind of on their body. And you're from this field area? Not the desert. No, this is... Yeah, this is home. We are in the fields and in the forests. I'm pretty... I'm, pr I'm pretty new here. I think maybe, arguably, I might be more at home here, too, but differently. What is this place called? Uh, we call this, um... Oh, do you speak giant? I do not. You just hear... Oh, yeah, the queen has the queen This is in his head. Krosn Holoch. I am not going to try to pronounce that. Uh, well, that's fine. This there is, is no, uh... Necessary translation into common, as it were. Could I do an <clears throat> insight check to see if there is any kind of change on Rev's face when he's doing this in the back of his mm -hmm. head? Like, if he's kind of looking confused or he's looking in any kind of way. Yep. That Maybe an insight check. Um, Twelve. Twelve? This 
a lot goes through. You, you, you notice the initial contact of Reveriel's hands on Strong's head as their eyes, if they were able to kind of hit to the back of their head, they would have done. But this kind of burst of energy as Rev's face, initially quite tense, relaxes. Uh, with a 12, you can't... You understand, knowing Rev's investigative mind and kind of his insight, their insightfulness, there is a conversation going on, but you can't see how it's being reacted. Strong relaxes... Uh, on his body language, I'll let that carry across to an insight on this entire situation. Strong is willingly giving information about something. Can I walk over and put my hand on his head to see if anything happens? Do you want? To, yeah, we could like telephone this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, yeah, like as if like yeah, like if I put my hand on his forehead, yeah, that whatever's happening there happens to me like a three-way okay. call. <laughs> uh, you are able to do this. Make me a wisdom check, straight wisdom with disadvantage because it's through a point of separation. <laughs> it's 12 again 12 again you don't get much um, but as this is happening you put your hand, hand on Rev's head Revriel, you feel something touch your consciousness as you grab Strong's hand yeah. the one yeah. that was cut off and Alwyn in this reality with which you don't find yourself in their reality you're still in the Smuggler's Guild with your friends the mage hand which was holding the clasps and one of the daggers catapults back to Strong's hand attaches and there's a pulse of blue light as this tattoo which you can now see very faded just pulses and you notice this branch tree form on his body just for a split second as it disappears again make me a history check um oh no oh no oh Oh, Jesus Uh, that's an 18 18 this is Methuselah this is the tree from your home, nice. from Notwood. Um, can I feel? Sorry, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Can I feel Alowin touch feel my conscious? A point of contact, and you um, subconsciously reach out and grab Strong's hand. I grab Strong's hand. You, yeah, you grab the thing which catapulted the mage hand back. Basically, he just recalled it. I'm still in the field, though. You are still in this beautiful. You are still in this beautiful forest. Can I reach? up and try to grab not in real life but in the here my brain in this dream yep. grab Alowin through this connection and pump a guidance into him to see if I can tether his consciousness Ooh, to Jesus. me you know the mechanics of D&D go so far <laughs> uh, but that's super cool so yeah yeah of course you can um, again we're going to use wisdom for this yep. um because all got a disadvantage, although you did get through. Straight roll. I'm adding my wisdom and my proficiency. Si, senor. It's a five plus a five plus a three for a thirteen. Thirteen. Hey, guys, the DC was fifteen. Oh. <sighs> you kind of confused as to why your arm kind of disobeyed you. This body, yeah. you've been getting used to it, and it suddenly yeah, went crazy. Um with the same one you just kind of fumble a little bit try and grab whatever you felt touch yeah, yeah, yeah. your full consciousness and you can't but it, oh, it's there though can I talk to him? you can talk to Strong yeah um, so yeah once all that's happening the arm goes and I recognise that and I say tell me about the mammoth riding giants who took over the camp in Knotwood this is in the uh, awake world and this is in the awake world you see Strong's kind of he Almost reverses, he kind of just, uh, in oh, Reveriel, sorry. Reveriel, you see Strong's eyes kind of dart somewhere else as if his consciousness is being t- touched by someone else. You hear a boom of Alowin's voice just, <gasps> and Strong just, <laughs> and starts to disapparate within his own mind as he's pulled back to this semi-consciousness. You are left in his mind. I'll answer Ol's question first. We are, we are simply... Coming back to where we always were from. Fuck. Are you a giant? Oh no. Reveal? I. In a blind range, I pull up my dagger and I slam it into the top of his head. Slam it into the top of his head. Uh, Can I tell oh. you what I was going to do in that? <laughs> so all of this is happening in a split second. That, um. Oh, sorry, man. He <laughs> is. This is going to be not great based on no. what I was about to say. I was Technically. Do. <laughs> unconscious. So, mm, roll with advantage, and if you hit, it's an auto crit. Yeah. 
This is oh. going to be not good, based on how you deci- decipher what I was going to do. Go. Cool. Ooh. Are you using the dagger? Yeah. Cool. Fifteen. Fifteen? Yeah. yeah. I mean, or I have per- a dagger on my person. I also have that dagger. Which one do you want to use? In your blind rage. I as think you it's probably it. in. Let's say my blind rage. Out of instinct, it's probably going to be the dagger that uh, is mine because it's where it's kept. Right. The other one is in a bag. Yep. So I'm not going to go. I'm just going to pull it. Mm-hmm. At Fifteen. Fifteen hits. Yeah. He's not raging, and he's kind of. Okay. Uh, ten. Ten. Normal dagger. Ten points of damage. He's out of rage, so he takes it. You see, you gash right on top of the head. You deftly avoid Rev's hand as you plunge this dagger right into his head. It kind of glances off his skull. This man has a thick head. Yeah. Um, but it does more damage to him than you saw anything else do, because he's no longer in a rage, and he's kind of letting it happen. I took away the um, unarmored hmm. barbarian stuff because he is so yeah. comfortable and yeah. not necessarily seeing himself just as a barbarian when he is at home. Revriel. As soon as I started to see him fade, my initial instinct was to take my glasses off and to acknowledge the space that I am in as an incorporeal space and to try to lose my corporeal being Mm. and to try to Mm. meld into his space being something of a space like this. And to try to shed this form okay, in but, his mind. That's not good. This will wow. be because he, his, his consciousness hasn't gone. He right. still exists here. Right. It's just the vessel with which you are communicating with this subconscious yep. has gone. Yep. So it will be disadvantage, and you will need a nat twenty. Great. So I just have to roll two nat twenties. No worries. You need to roll two nat twenties at once. But you can do it. We're gonna do one at a time. Can't do it. Can't do it. It was a three. Bastard. A three? It's not, it's not even close. Ooh. With this on it, oh Christ. There's no, yeah. Okay. As you attempt this, you attempt for your bonds to break, even in this, you have been most conscien- conscious in this body. Yes. And even though you don't kind of understand the idea of this corporeal reality and this, this physical form, it is very difficult to lose yourself from it. And you try. You try with these kind of trees around you you feel that this is a theoretical space this but it holds strong emotions and there is something about this place which just gives an element of oomph and kind of power Mm. and you try and break from your bonds initially your eyes go but you've done this before you've been able to give parts of yourself to other people to influence their decisions to create your magic Mm. and it doesn't go quite as far and as you try and break from your kind of physical, quote unquote, physical bonds within this imagined space, something is pulling you together. And maybe an insight check. Mm-hmm. It's 23. You get an immense feeling of danger if you were to fully let go of whatever you are held within. Mm. But this feeling isn't an order. It's not a, you'll kill everyone. It's a... Warning, it's a, a voice on the breeze, kind of a feeling of care, but also a warning that something much worse, not just to yourself, but quite a lot of folk could happen if you were to burst your boundaries. And everything turns red and you are catapulted out as you see Alowin pulling out a dagger, a strong kind of falls forward. <laughs> Am I? So I'm holding. Stilgar is just watching. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna fucking. He's not dead, is he? Nope. Just gonna fucking go for him. Okay. Just like. <laughs> right. Oh. Make an attack roll with advantage. No. Uh, twenty. Not twenty. If you wish, you can execute him right here, right now. Oh, with Stilgar me. watching on. That's what I want to do. And I think you Split all can see decision. that that's that's, the, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah. But you guys can see that this is not going... I want to make that very clear. Mm. That this, he's in an absolute fucking rage. So he, this dagger came down onto the top of his head. Right in him, front of me. And mm-hmm. went... Poof. You are... As this happens, Alowin just kind of releases, kind of like... <sighs> almost absorbing whatever rage Strong let go as he kind of pushed himself to his home. You wake up and feel a splatter of blood as this body falls in front of you with this 
half giant. Yeah. Stilgar, you know, first of all, the fear in her eyes is enormous. You've just killed the person keeping her alive. I fall <sighs> with him, and as I fall, he as, as as he falls over, I end up on top of him, and then it's like the realization that he's dead. I pull my dagger out, and I'm just like obviously covered in blood. Yep. Breathing super heavy, and I turn around and I look at her, and I fucking bolt at her. Ooh. Can I grab him? Yeah, you can grab him. Uh, okay, <laughs> come uh, opposed because uh, you're grabbing. You can both do either athletics or acrobatics. I'm gonna. I'm near her, aren't I? Because yep. we were talking. I'm gonna like shield her from because I need cool. her alive. Uh, just uh, acrobatics from yourself, I believe. Twelve oh. acrobatics. Twelve acrobatics. Yeah. What did you roll? Oh, uh, seven. Seven. Okay. Cool. Eleven uh, acrobatics. Eleven acrobatics. Perfect. Give me six seconds, and I'm gonna calm her down. <laughs> cool. Um, as you do this in your blind rage, you're kind of fumbling stuff. Yeah. It takes you a while to get up. You kind of go and reveal again this feeling, this wind kind of guides your arm. You've never lost control of so many limbs yeah. as your arm just <laughs> catapults out and you grab Alawint by the scruff of his neck and kind of hold him back. Ethelief, as you step in front of St- um, Stilgar, you kind of turn just to see if she's okay and she is gone. Uh, no! Fuck! What'd you do? Alawin, you are panting this blind rage. I don't know whether it's subsiding, but you've just killed I... in cold blood uh, yeah. do I a see... harmless individual. Do I, see... do I have a second to make an action? Uh, you can roll. What is the action? Yeah. I was going to Yeah, point... you can roll an action. I was going to point at or go for where that was and cast a spell magic. Okay, cool. Cast nice. Spells. Yeah. Oh, fuck, I can't. Cool. Nope. You can make me a free uh, perception check. Anyone that wants to, to try and find out where Stilgar may have got to, you can run a perception check. 16. 16? Anyone beat a 27? <laughs> no, I got... No. Or get an out 20. Eight, I got 18. 18. She's gone. Fuck! Fuck. Alan, what the fuck? What have you done? You've killed him! And I, sh- I shake off... <clears throat> can I shake off Rev off his hand? Off of, if he's grabbing yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I shake him off and I spit on the giant and I just fucking go to leave. Alan! Uh, I'm following and I'm going to try and fucking grab Alan. Cool. Um... Yeah, like, are you just storming back. out? Yeah, straight from where the door, the ladder, and all the rest of it. Like, cool. I'm out. Right. <laughs> I'll back to the top. I'll, 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 as I'm just getting licked, I kind of just tap my staff on the floor and cast Entangled. On Alwyn? Yeah. What does he have to make? Um, I think it's a dex. Wow, we really... very hot in here. Flip the switch uh, and it is <laughs> Strength savings for Ollie from Alwyn. What's your spell save DC, Doit? 14. 14? It's 19. Damn. 19. As the vines are kind of coming up, you, Alwyn, you see, oh, you storm off and you see as Doit kind of, these bears that were, he was astride just start to get smaller and smaller, turn into vines that whisk round each other as Doit's arm shoots out and you see your vines start to appear on the floor in front of you, but like possessed by this anger, you kick through and break through and you can continue through. Since I- The bears are gone. Can I, I? I actually send my mage hand out to Alowin to grab. I kind of like want to try and sort of. It's invisible too, so we won't mm-hmm. see it. Um, I want to kind of like bring his by his n- neck, kind of like grab him really hard and like spin him round. Cool. Make an athletics check with advantage. Uh, I'll just make a contest, contested athletics or acrobatics for me. So many rolls today because it's PvP. <laughs> I got one, two. Athletics or acrobatics? Yep. 25. 25? Yeah, fine. 18. Cool. I'm rolling Alan, high as you're, you, things, like, you well get done. to the bottom of the stairs as you feel one hand on your shoulder and you're like, I can push through this. It's enough. You start to go and you feel another hand on your shoulder as two mage hands invisibly hold you back as you then look and you see Stilgar <laughs> doing exactly the same. Uh-huh. Okay, that was quite dramatic. I have a feeling you're not going to kill me, but are we going to at least talk? Alwyn, are you okay? Does, doesn't say anything, just fucking steely right at her. Am I facing them all right? Because I was walking You are we, facing I away. Turned, spins you around. Do you yeah. want to spin around? Yeah, no, that was Easy. part of... I wanted to yeah. spin. Grab and spin. Still got... Comes out of the shadows. She just rolled really well in her stealth. Yeah, uh, <laughs> um, yeah I look directly at her, and Alwyn knows... Kind of works out what's happening, and he knows that there's two mage hands on her. Yep. Him. So he understands that one of you, I'm assuming you, have used my hand. Have made hands Strong's probably. hand is gone. Quite poetically, she's using him to hold you back. She'll need more than that to stop me. 
Uh, yeah, I don't say anything, but I realise that it's her, uh, or one of you guys and her. Unless you've physically got your hand no, out. No, I've got no, no, my no, invisible mage they're hand. They're both 30 feet away from yeah, you yeah. with the mage hand. Don't say anything. Nothing. Alloran, you need to start explaining it now. He was unconscious, Alloran. He was no threat. What the fuck is going on? And I have my dagger in my hand. Mm-hmm. And I'm like... I look down and I see the dagger and I see all the kind of blood on, on my hands and up my arms and I look up and I look just past these two and I see him on the floor and then I drop the dagger. Cool. I drop him and, like, <laughs> go over to him. Cool. On you the still, dagger You drop. feel one hand release as Ethelief moves towards you, but you still feel Stilgar is focused on you. It's not so much uh, pulling you back, it's holding just in case. Yeah. She's just being cautious. So I'm still held? Lightly. Lightly. So as she's walking towards, as Ethelief is walking towards me, I, if I can do this, I go to pull my bow. Okay. To her. Ooh. And say, that fucker killed my family. You of all people should know that. Now you're working with her. As far as I'm concerned, you can fuck off. Alan, we don't even know what you're talking about. He was all I know is he was unconscious, and all of a sudden you stabbed him to death. What are you talking about? He killed your family. Tell us. I trust you. I, d- I know you wouldn't do this for no reason, but you need to fucking start talking. That's what I've just said. I just told you what happened. What? How do you know that? Did they hear anything he said? Mm-hmm. No. no, I have no idea. All, all I saw was. I, oh no, no, you heard. So you heard nuts. the mutterings of. Oh, actually, they would have heard. Giant. With your, but so you would have heard like the. Giant. Giant. Yeah. Um, if you spoke to him in giant, he would have replied in giant, and they wouldn't have heard anything. But if not, he would have been muttering, and they'd have caught a few words. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have spoke to him in giant. But yeah, and I start to realise that you would have heard some of that, maybe not all of it, but because it was so visceral in his head, he just thought that's just what was happening in the in cool. the room. If that makes sense. <sighs> Collar starts to come back to his face, and he realises, and he drops his head, and 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 his and his and he lowers his bow. And he says, yeah, he, or his kind, killed my family. Stilgar, you feel the release of one of the mage hands. As Stilgar steps forward, weirdly, side by side, Ethelief, um, comfortable in this kind of roguish connection. You are from Northwood. Nods. Right. Strong had ancestry, of course, all the barbarians kind of rely on the blood of their kind and the, the, the rage that has gone down generations. It is as much lost to him as it was to you. Well, what you did, I'm not blaming you for what you did. I, I think whatever path you find yourself on, if vengeance like that is a way, or at least I kind of hope that the vengeance is now out of the way. Because there are other ways to avenge your family. If they are lost. You hear rumors of not where people move. People are taken, right? From the, the giants took people? Yeah. There's always a little bit of hope. Oh, Ethelief just goes over and just gives Alan a huge hug. Now yeah. I will answer. Arms by his size just gets hugged. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions you have? Because we face a much bigger problem than what is, well, you know, your histories are your histories. And they are important to you, but what I see is a team who are actually quite capable and are not killing me, so thank you. But I suggest we brush ourselves off. You have the chats you need to have. I will get you to your family, Ethelief. And then we will have a talk about what we can do about these higher problems and I would be careful with those clasps. I will give them to you. You may be able to get to someone who can see what they can do properly and maybe save you from whatever magic is within them. And what I would do first, and she kind of smiles at this, is I'd at least let Took know what's changed because if you come back and I'm still running around, he can get to you easier than I can. And he won't be as persuadable with a little let's team up against this one person but if I also go and talk to him but that will be in private <clears throat> yeah I, I sort of try and release myself from the hug 
walk over, kick her off, walk over um, <laughs> to thing in silence. I want to search him, see what's on him. Cool. If there's anything uh, on him. Make me an investigation check. Rev is still just sitting on the ground, covered in Strong's blood. <laughs> just <laughs> like it's just a five. Just a five. He was dressed for being at home. He's, he's in like kind of tan sack-like trousers, shirtless. There's nothing really on him. Cool. His yeah, axe I, by I, his so side. I search through him. Nothing much. So stand up uh, from him. Walk over to Stilgar and say, "No more lies." If you're going to help us, then you have to help us. And if it turns out it's anything other than that, I'll do exactly the same to you. Still going strong is not so strong anymore. And I go to walk out. Cool. <laughs> anything anyone else wants <laughs> to do? Someone do some comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Someone, can I ask why? Oh, yes, I can I ask two why people to do it. got stabbed first? Oh, yeah. I'm intrigued by you. I think. So you stabbed Doit? I tried to get you out of the way. Could have asked. And you'd have stabbed yourself, little man. Well, I'd rather me stab me than you stab me. I know where my pain thresholds are. That's fair. Also, Here, and she hands you a vial of red liquid and you have a minor healing potion. I just look at um, Stilgar and just say, he's not so little. And just Ooh, look, look at Doit to see if you stand, see, see if you'll stand up a <laughs> bit to, more. Trying to get a baby to walk? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Anything else anyone else wants to do? So many things. Um, I, yeah, I want to um, go over to Strong and just make sure that he's, like, looking peaceful, so if his eyes are closed and make sure he's, like, just lying down properly. Amazing. Stilgar comes over and helps you. So I don't worry, he'll get yeah. the correct burial, you know, dying in battle. And this is a battle. Yeah. It's a way that he always wanted to go. That or... Drinking. Does he want to look under like many a... folk? You know, I beat him on both. Does, like... does he want to look like a tree? <laughs> I can make him kind of look like a tree. I I mean I don't I don't think he wants anything right now. I, I think oh, he's, he's kind dead of... now. Exactly. Yeah. That's... Yes. Like, but pre pre dead one would like a want pre... look like tree. I, I'm. I would leave that up to you, man. He's not my um, friend. I think whatever happens, I will try and get him to a place where he would feel comfortable to be left. I think if you make him a tree, now we're underground, so if you make him like a tree, it will just kind of grow, and this little kind of covert place will be... People will know where I am, so maybe don't do this. Oh, I was asking. Can I go over to Alloin? Yep. Yeah, I went towards the door, so I'm going to stand by the door. <laughs> cool. Just go... Either up to the side of him if he's just like looking for, not like directly in front of him, not like either like behind him or something, and just kind of like lean up against him mm -hmm. and use that connection to cast to cast calm emotions. Okay, but in order for emotions to be calmed from another person, there has to be, I would imagine, an openness to your. From your state to their state. And I would yep. like to, rather than try to calm him, just feel what he is feeling. Okay, you can just make me an inside check. And just I, share in it. You I'm not don't even, even need to expend a I'm spell slot for this. I'm not looking to... I'm not even looking for... Whatever insight I get, I get. I'm not even looking for that. I just want to it's the action sit of. in it yeah. with him. Of course, I think uh, that's a free action. You don't even need an expended spell slot. You, you've been... All of you... Um, have opened a part of yourselves to each other that you hadn't before. And there's this air of... Emotion is quite a physical thing when it's shared by the people at the same time with such truth. Mm. And there's a receptibility to where you've been and who you are uh, and the stuff and the subconsciouses you've touched um, that you can feel the energy of another. And you just sit in Alowin's emotion. Yeah. So... I don't mean to kind of move this, but uh, took you called him, right, Revriel? So he might be bringing people to kill me. I did, So yes. can you go and tell him everything's fine? And <laughs> she's like, <laughs> ushering. I don't mean, I just, I almost died today. I got quite scared, so. Up to me. you, boss. I, Rev says to I think we should. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Not back to this again. <laughs> uh, just very quickly, as he's leaning against me and as I'm leaning against the door, what he would feel is obviously all the stuff that he knows about my family yep. that I've said that they were yep. killed. So just a very, very different side to Alloin now. Mentally, a lot of shame and the realisation of having killed this person um, and which is like, you know, it was kind of obviously very, very personal, super aggressive and the shame in that for a year and a bit he's kind of been messing around and been doing bits and bobs just trying to, not really been focusing on this thing, definitely mm -hmm. trying to ignore it. And I met these guys and has kind of, it's like anger as well as shame and he's just been kind of fucking about really I know we've done some <clears throat> worthy stuff but definitely could have been doing more and yeah he's just really just fucking down on himself and cool. upset with himself for everything that's happened up until now especially this sweet I just look at the these guys not not worried about Stilgar at the moment at mm -hmm. all and I just say um we need we need to stick together in this. I know right now that there's been a lot of talk about finding my family and, and my kids, and obviously they're really important to me, and I, I can't quite believe they're even alive. But Alwyn, we will find... That happened today. We learned that today. Yeah. Yeah. We will find what happened in Knotwood for you, Alwyn, and we'll find out more about you, Rev, and... and and why you're here and what you need. And do it. Do it. <laughs> you can come. <laughs> you should be there too. Do it. You should be there too. And with that, we will leave the episode there for Aww. today. Oh, my God. Whoa. Whoa. Jesus. A lot heavier than I thought it that would be. Yeah. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, wow. We will... Do See what happens next. If you guys want to find out what everyone thought about that, we'll get that over on our Behind the Board, which is on our Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash merely players. And we couldn't let this episode go by without giving a huge shout out and a thank you to our Patreon subscribers who are... Jacob Cote, Patrick Khan, Jerry Lopez, and Teresa Dolan. Also, if you want to keep up to date with what we do, head over to our Instagram at merely players TTRPG. But in the meantime, have a wonderful day wonderful week folks and we'll see you next time bye, bye.